Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan, and yes, I don't have a hat on today because I think my hair has finally grown back from where the barber that I was going to absolutely buzzed my head for whatever reason. I don't know why. You ever had a bad haircut? That's what happened to me. Uh, but anyway, I think we're finally at the place where I'm relatively okay with where my hair is finally growing at right now. This week, I have pretty much the last of the Goosebumps Halloween type books to tell you about or to review here on the channel. Um, there is one, of course, it's actually the TV adaptation of this particular, it's the book adaptation of that TV episode for this novel from Goosebumps back in the day, the old classic series from uh, the 90s, the 62 book run. This book is called Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns by R.L. Stein. I love this reissue cover, it's very beautiful. I love the original cover too, but I have a feeling that I think I like this cover more. Um, I don't currently own a copy of the original classic issue or cover or anything like that. I would, I would like to own it, I just don't have it right now to show you in the video for the review. Maybe later on down the road I'll get a copy of it, because I really like this book a lot. It was very fun. Um, I also have a second copy of the reissue, because my fiancé got this for me today for our, well yesterday actually, for our four-year anniversary of dating. And of course we're actually engaged and stuff for about a year, a little over a year now. But still, it was we celebrate that whole get-together thing four years ago. Rachel, thank you so much. She wrote this absolutely beautiful, sweet note. There's nothing like her. She's just amazing. Um, she wrote it in the front of the book, and this copy will always mean something to me. So this copy here is just my basic backup, you know, uh, just to have it for vacation purposes, if I read it at Halloween or whatever again next year. Um, not for a video on the channel, but just because, if I do. Attack of the jack lanterns is very good. The only exposure I've ever had to this book, I've never read the book, I have seen the TV episode a few times on DVD. I do have that. I hope to rewatch it, God willing, in the next day or two, maybe even tonight, and possibly get up a review either tonight or sometime this week, just because I had a really good time always watching that episode. It feels so great, like a fall time, October time, Halloween night, trick or treat feeling to it. It really captures that very well, just like the Haunted Mask TV episodes for part one and part two of the Haunted Mask. Um, but. This particular book, I actually really enjoy. I think in some respects, it's actually better than the TV episode. Uh, from what I remember, at least. It's been a couple of years since I watched the Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns TV episode adaptation. But I really like the story. I actually thought it was a little weird. It was one of those very weird, unique formattings for a Goosebumps book. It's not just a straight-up beginning, middle, and end. It actually has a weird timeline thing going on for it. And it's also very short. It's about 111 pages long, not your typical 120, 130-page long book that you get from Goosebumps. That was very different to me. I was a little surprised by that. Basically, the book starts off with Drew, our main character, who's actually a girl. I don't know why you'd call your daughter Drew, but somebody did. And Drew is essentially rambling on about the previous two Halloweens for the previous two years to this particular Halloween that's coming up in the next day or so in the story. Essentially, two years ago, there is a couple of kids named Lee and Tabby, and they hosted a Halloween party, and they scared everybody to death, basically, with what happened at the party, uh, with this horrific, like, kidnapping robbery scenario they set up, and it just frightened everybody. And then the next year, which is the last year, according to what Drew was telling us, Basically, on that Halloween, they had set up this entire scheme to scare Lee and Tabby, you know, Drew and her friends. Lee and Tabby were going to be terrified by this whole thing they set up. They did so much stuff, all these booby traps and everything in the house to just scare them to death uh, in front of everybody and actually embarrass them in front, in front of a bunch of kids in their classes and stuff. Well, on Halloween day, after all this work for months on the house and trying to scare Lee and Tabby, Lee and Tabby call saying they're not showing up that day, that they're actually going out of town to go to another location to do trick-or-treating and stuff on Halloween night because they think it, they'd get more candy and better candy and whatnot. And so everybody's pissed off over that. So this is two years later, they're still trying to get their revenge on everything that happened with Lee and Tabby over the years. And the kids, especially Drew, our main character, is very frustrated with them. One of the most irritating things about this book, well, one of the two most irritating things about the book, the only two flaws I find in the book for that matter, is that Drew constantly growls all the time. Somebody will say something snarky to her and she'll be like, grrr, and that's the entire book, or the entire line, you'll just have G-R-R-R-R-R-R-R over and over again, like some kind of pirate, like some kind of dog, you know, it's just stupid. Um, I don't like that character trait. I don't think it makes her stand out anymore compared to other characters like Carly Beth or anybody else because most characters from Goosebumps are typically just recycled over and over again. But the second part to my complaint, or the second complaint in total, is that there's too many characters. <laughs> there's too many people roaming around, too many people doing too many things. 
You got Lee and Tabby, you got Shane and Shayna, you got Drew, and I think there was somebody else too I'm forgetting about. Maybe Walker, I think was the name of the person. A lot of kids, a lot of people to keep up with, and Goosebumps, like I said, doesn't really have the most developed characters. The most actually developed character is Carly Beth from The Haunted Mask, and that's about it from Goosebumps. Um, maybe Evan from Monster Blood books, the first four at least. Outside of that, there's not really a whole lot of development for Goosebumps characters, at least the human characters. Slappy is developed. You have some other characters that are fun and developed. Not so much the human characters. So that becomes a little bit of a problem here. Um, I know Shane and Shane are twins, and that's really all I know about any of these kids. But a lot of this book, for a 111-page book, I would say about 50 pages of this book are dedicated to the whole backstory about the, pa the past two Halloweens and the plots to scare Tabby and Lee, and telling about when Tabby and Lee scared everybody else two years previously. Um, it's a fun book. I mean, it has a lot going for it, just a lot of enjoyment and just kind of just creepiness, honestly. The ending is a little weird. I don't remember the TV episode being like this. I'll talk about that more in my review for the TV episode if you're curious about what my thoughts are on that and comparing it kind of to the ending to this without spoiling anything. Um, I remember the TV episode adaptation having a lot of a, a lot more, uh, I would say a lot more of a better ending, honestly, at least a more satisfying ending from what I remember off the top of my head. That's not to say that this one's bad. It's just not as good, I would say, from what I remember. It might even be the very same thing and I don't realize that. But, um... I like the TV episode a lot, but I think this book is scary, <laughs> like genuinely creepy. Um, on Halloween night this year, two random people that they assume, I'm talking about Drew and Walker and everybody else, assume are Shane and Shayna. They're these really tall people, very skinny, very lanky. They have pumpkins for heads, and the pumpkins actually have a fire inside of them moving around and kind of shooting out a little bit out of the actual eye sockets and everything. And no one can really figure out if this is Shane and Shayna. These people aren't talking. They're just kind of walking around with the kids, and eventually they're just like, we know a really good place to go trick-or-treating. Let's go out there instead. They kind of lead the kids out in the middle of the woods, almost like a Pied Piper type thing. Really creepy, really eerie stuff in my opinion. Um, the kids follow them out there, and there's a lot to this. And of course, Tabby and Lee think it's just Shane and Shayna trying to pull a prank on them. And it may or may not be. We don't really know until the end of the book, but there's a lot of stuff going on. And I actually think some of the things in the book are not really graphic. I mean, there are some Goosebumps books out there that are genuinely horrifically scary, like Ghost Camp, in my opinion. Um, you have really, really tense books like Little Comic Book Shop of Horrors when it comes to the downstairs basement area of that book, because it's a Give Yourself Goosebumps book where you get to choose where you go. And then you have books like Goosebumps Wanted, The Haunted Mask that terrifies me. You have The Haunted Mask 1 and 2 that scare me. Uh, Elements of Screaming the Haunted Mask from the Horrorland series is a little bit scary to me, too. There are Goosebumps books out there that are gory, even, like Goosebumps Wanted the Haunted Mask. This doesn't have, like, any gore to it. It's just the stuff that's there, that's just the eeriness and the atmosphere, I'd say, if anything. Uh, the writing for the atmosphere is genuine and just great. I love it. I think it builds such a great tone around the story. Such a, again, an eeriness is really the word to put for this. I would say the atmosphere just keeps getting thicker and thicker, and you get kind of tense reading the book, in my opinion. Um, I had a lot of things going on this past week, so I read the book over a few days instead of just burning through it in like one night or a couple of days. Um, it just, it gets tense, man. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, to be such a fast-paced book, I mean, it just, it really, it really gets unnerving at times. And it really kind of gets under your skin a little bit, too, with just some of the, the kind of harshness of these pumpkin-headed people. If I was a kid and I had seen this episode of the pumpkin-headed people, or if you want to call them the jack-o'-lanterns themselves... I would have loved this because, of course, here on my channel recently I did a review for The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy's very famous Halloween episode called um, Attack... or What was it called? What was it called? Um, I forgot what the what it was called. If you, go, if you go on my channel and you type in, like, Billy and Mandy's... Oh, Billy and Mandy's Jacked Up Halloween. That's what it was. I was obsessed with that episode. I've watched it every single year since it premiered on TV on Cartoon Network. Uh, it has to do with a fellow having a jack-o'-lantern for a head. I've always loved that. I think that it's just, there's something about that idea from Sleepy Hollow that has always bothered me, even though Sleepy Hollow is not really where it originates, but kind of with cartoon adaptations of Sleepy Hollow, that's where I got it from when I was a kid, and I was always a, and just in love with this whole thing. Uh, you had that uh, that Nick Carter horror film called The Hollow, and it was involved with that, too. Like, I always loved this idea of the Headless Horseman having a pumpkin head. And it kind of just developed into the Billy and Mandy's Jacked Up a Halloween thing, having that. And then if I would have seen this when I was a kid, I would have loved this even more. 
because it's kind of creepy as a TV episode, and the book itself is eerie, too. Really, really eerie, honestly. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to say about the book. I mean, it just kind of flies by, honestly. Like I said, 111 pages, that's nothing. It zooms by. There's not, like, a whole lot of character stuff, like I said, but there's a lot of just fun to be had, a lot of just craziness, just the stuff that happens with the trick-or-treating with those two jack-o'-lantern people. It's fun. Now, again, the ending is a little weird. I could see people saying they hate the ending. I could see people like myself saying that we like the ending. It's fine for the most part. I don't know if I'd say it's satisfying. You know, I know that's probably blasphemy to most people who love Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, and it's not that I don't love it. I really, really love it. Um, I think it's a great book, honestly, especially from the original classic series. So if you want something fun to read this Halloween, this is a really good choice. I would recommend Haunted Mask 1, 2, 3, or 4. Um, those are really good, too, especially 1, 2, and 4. I'd say those are the best ones, in my opinion. I would say those three, specifically, are better than this one. Um, but this is good. Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns is a good book. It doesn't really have a whole lot to be said about it, but it's good. It has a good cover. The original cover's good, too. I like it a lot. I recommend it. Um, the TV episode's really good, too, if you want something fun to watch on Halloween. Uh, a lot goofier and sillier there than it is here, but this is just straight-up creepy. If you're a big fan of Ghost Camp from Goosebumps, I think you'd like this a lot, too, if you're more of the atmosphere kind of terror. Like, if you also read the Goosebumps Series 2000 book, Headless Halloween, I think you'd love this, too, or vice versa. If you read this and loved it and you want to see another thing, it has to do with, like, a, like a mask or a headless type thing. Headless Halloween was really good, too. Really, really good. I think I like that book more than this, honestly. But I could be wrong. But, yeah. What do you guys think about Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns? Put your thoughts and comments down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you have to say about this book. Um, thank you for watching. What do you think about the TV episode as well? Again, I hope to get a review out, God willing, in the next couple of days or tonight even, possibly. I don't know. kind of depends on how things go tonight with stuff I have to do. Uh, very busy. <laughs> very, very busy. This coming week is Halloween, of course, so be careful if you go out trick-or-treating and I don't get to talk to you by that point. Uh, or if you just happen to find the channel, God bless you. Be careful, okay? Don't trust anybody, especially you folks that are younger out there. Don't trust anybody. Trust your parents and your friends, and that's it. Don't go following out in dark areas and dark alleyways and stuff. Don't, don't do that. Don't go into people's houses either. I'm glad that they brought that up in this book, especially for a 90s book. Anyway, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, if I had to rate this book on a 5-star basis, I would probably give this a 4 out of 5. It's a really high 4 out of 5, though. I really like it. I think I get a little confused with some of the character stuff. It took me a while to get a, grab on, a little bit of a grip on that. But I love it for the most part. I think it's a really solid, creepy book, and it has a lot to offer. And, yeah, you might really dig this if you can get your hands on it sometime soon. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below, guys. Thank you for watching. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today. Happy Halloween. Goodbye.